Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be discussing on the 10-step formula to achieve your financial freedom in 2023. Financial freedom, it can sound like a nice theory, but the truth is, it's possible for anyone to achieve it. And I mean anyone, even someone who once had tens of thousands in student loan debt, like yours truly. No matter what financial troubles you have today, there is always a way to get back to black. Perhaps trying a budgeting app is your first step. So guys, in this video, we will dive into the importance of financial freedom and share some financial freedom tips, including a few that worked for me to get where I am today. So guys, what is financial freedom? Financial freedom is about taking ownership of your finances. You have a dependable cash flow that allows you to live the life that you want. You aren't worrying about how you pay your bills or certain expenses. And you aren't burdened with a pile of debt. It's about recognizing that you need more money to pay down debts and maybe increasing your income with a side hustle. So we'll get to that in just a minute. It's also about planning your long-term financial situation by actively saving for a rainy day or retirement. So let's talk about the 10 game-changing financial freedom tips, which is very important if you really want to achieve that. The first is understand where you are at. You can't achieve financial freedom without knowing your starting points, looking at how much debts you have, how much savings you don't have, and how much money you need can be a depressing reality. But this is a valuable step in the right direction. Compile a list of all your debts, mortgage, student loans, car loans, credit cards, and any other debt you may have accumulated. Don't forget to include any money you may have borrowed from friends or family members over the years. Now, take a deep breath. And another one. Then add up all the numbers. How much debt do you have? If it's a big number, don't freak out. I promise I'll share some ways to pay that down later in this video. If it's a smaller number, congratulations. Feel free to share your financial freedom tips in the comments down below in this video. Next, take a look at all the money you have saved up. Compile a list of all your savings, saving accounts, stocks, company stock matching programs, company retirement matching programs, and retirement plans. Then we'll add the recurring monthly payments you receive such as salary, side hustle, money, and so on and so forth. So keep these numbers in mind as we walk through the next financial freedom tips. Then the second, look at money positively. Debt can definitely be a little bit discouraging, you know, but remember that money is a good thing. Even if it seems to carry a lot of burden right now, you deserve to achieve your financial freedom. According to You Are a Badass at, Ma at Making Money by Jen Sincero, people who don't make a lot of money often feel shame when it comes to making money. And so the biggest obstacle that many people experience when it comes to making money is that they feel like having money is bad. Many feel guilty for having it and guiltier for wanting it. Sincero has said about money that we use it every day to enhance our lives, yet we always seem to focus on the negatives about it. Money is simply a necessity like food or water. It helps you buy the things you need and live the life that you want. To experience financial freedom guys, you are going to need to look at money as a tool to help you achieve your dreams, fuel your energy and live a stress-free life you can enjoy. Because if you view money negatively, you will subconsciously sabotage your chances of making it and keeping it. The third, write down your goals. Why do you need money? That's a question. Do you want to get rid of debt for good? Are you desperate to escape the 9 to 5 grind? Is there a place you have always wanted to travel to? Do you need to save for a wedding, kids or retirement? When I achieved financial freedom guys, it was because I tied it to an emotional goal. My goal was to get out of student loan debt and save for my first home. And to be honest, 
it, it, it was a, a euphoric experience watching the debt dwindle away and my savings get to rise. I got so excited by seeing the numbers change that I worked harder and harder to make more money to see a bigger change in my personal finances. Would I have achieved my goal of financial freedom if I hadn't tied the goal of, to something emotional? Probably not. I was desperate to get out of debt and move out of my parents' house. That desperation kept me motivated throughout my journey. Another interesting thing happened in February 2016. I wrote on a scrap piece of paper a few of my goals like, you know, for example, make $100,000 selling products online, save $20,000 for a down payment, pay off $24,000 worth of students loans. And I ended up misplacing that paper and completely forgot about it. And then one day, just over a year later, when I was already living in my new home, I found the, 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 in my notebook, sure enough, I had accomplished all three things. The funny thing was that I wasn't even consciously thinking about those goals. You might not accomplish everything you want in a month, but a year is a long time to make progress on your goals. Make sure your goal is tied to a specific number that you want to hit. Believe it or not, you will start working towards those goals without even realizing it. Knowing exactly what you want to achieve makes achieving financial freedom a million times easier. The fourth, track your spending. An important step towards financial freedom is tracking your spending. You can use a tool like Mint, which will let you know how much money you are spending, which categorize um, your overspends in, um, how much money is in all of your accounts, and how much debt you have. Another cool thing about Mint is that it allows you to set goals within the dashboard. You can keep track of your goals and know the exact month you will be expected to hit the goal based on how much money you put in, thus keeping you accountable and reminding you to keep putting money towards it for you. After using Mint for one month, I managed to save some extra money towards my new wedding fund goal. Mint helped me stay focused on my goal and pushed me towards creating more passive income to hit. You know, the feats, pay yourself first. You have probably heard the expression, pay yourself first before. But in case you haven't, pay yourself first means putting a specific amount of money in your saving accounts before paying anything else such as bills, and the act of paying yourself first has helped countless people inch closer to achieving financial freedom. Why? Why is it so? Because if you want to pay yourself $1,000 per day period first, then whatever is left over needs to go towards bills. And if you don't have enough to cover those bills, then you are forced to pick up a side income to make up the cost. By paying yourself first, you guarantee that you are always putting money aside to invest in yourself by doing the opposite, you only get whatever is left over, which usually isn't substantial enough to help you experience financial freedom. You can pay yourself first in other ways too. For example, if your company has a retirement savings program, you can ask to have money withdrawn for your retirement. That way you are investing in yourself and your future first. The money gets deducted from your pay, so everything that's left over is money that you can put aside for your bills and expenses. The sixth tip spend less. In 1958, Warren Buffett purchased a five-bedroom home for $31,500 and hadn't moved out of it since. His net worth, an outstanding $90.3 billion, he can afford a bigger and more expensive home. But his frugality might well, very well be the reason why, you know, he is one of the world's richest People. Kanye West, on the other hand, isn't afraid to flaunt his money. He lives in a $20 million mansion and at one point with $53 million of debt, he decided to ask Mark Zuckerberg for a $1 billion on Twitter. The difference between the two super successful gentlemen, Buffett didn't spend more than he needed to and West spends money, you know, he doesn't have. The truth is, plenty of rich people don't look like rich people. Um, Zuckerberg literally wears the same boring t-shirt and jeans every day. Buying less stuff can actually help you get richer. By spending less, two things work in your favor. One, you have more money to put aside for your financial freedom. Two, you will learn that you actually need a lot less stuff to survive, which also helps you put aside more money. And this goes into your next point. The seventh tip, guys. 
is by experiences, not things. Life is short. It's not about holding all your cash until you're 65. You are allowed to enjoy life while you are alive. Ultimately, the things that help you, you know, to live more fulfilled life will be the experiences you have, not the products you own. And other things you buy making you happier over the long term? Does the debt you have from buying a bunch of stuff make your life easier? Now let's flip the switch. What's your happiest memory? What were you doing? Who were you with? Let's create more memories just like that. Maybe you have a friend you love working out with. Invite her over to work out to a YouTube playlist at home for free. It's date night. You want to make it unforgettable? Find a cool activity you have never done before on Groupon for a fraction of the price. You have always dreamed of traveling to Rome. You have been saving up money for a year to experience your dream vacation. Go to the vacation feeling guilt-free. You didn't go into debt for it. You have earned it. Or you can become a digital nomad and travel the world while working abroad. Life is made up of moments, of course. Um, the best ones come from quality time spent with friends and family why some products can help you bring you closer to your family like weekly family video game night most of them don't add much value to be honest so don't spend money you have or you don't have to pretend that you have money the eighth is pay off debt some people will tell you it's wiser to invest your money in stocks instead of paying off your debts if you are an expert stock picker Maybe that's true, but if you have never in invested in stocks before, you could wind up with much more debt. A lot of people feel the same thing after finishing their last debt payment, relieved. If you have let's say $50,000 of debt, even if you have $30,000 cash in the bank, um, you can't really call yourself financially free. You are still $20,000 in the hole. Why paying someone else isn't as glamorous as having money in the bank? It does bring you closer to financial freedom. There are two main methods of paying off debts, snowball and avalanche. Snowball is when you pay off the smallest debt first. Avalanche is when you pay off the debt with the highest interest rates. You need to decide what works best for you. But when I was working towards becoming debt free, I did the snowball effect. It helped keep me more motivated. Since I was able to get rid of my first debt, a $1,200 credit card bill in only a month, the feeling of accomplishment helped motivate me to tackle a much bigger, lingering student loan. And since credit cards were no longer a problem, I would pay about on average three times more than the measly $300 minimum payment. In the end, it took about three years to finish paying off the student's loans instead of the nine years I was allotted. Paying off a big debt leaves a massive weight off your shoulders. After paying off your debt, you see the amount of money you have in the bank rise. It's an awesome feeling watching the number climb, even if you had to watch it fall at the beginning. And it keeps you motivated to continue growing it. The ninth, create additional sources of income. Okay, guys, so at this point, you are probably thinking my debt is a lot more than my salary. How can I pay it off? if I don't make enough. If you are serious about financial freedom guys, you have got to sacrifice some blood, sweat and tears. Your 9 to 5 might not cut it off, but if that's the case, you need to step it up and look for money outside your current job. Some experts recommend having 7 streams of income. If you have a 9 to 5 job, congratulations, you have one, only 6 more to go. Now you can look at your source of income. Um, in two ways active income that is trading time for money for example or passive income money that you can keep coming in even while you sleep if you trade your time for money you are limited by the hours of the day here are a few side jobs you can you know you can do to earn an active income become a freelance writer finding jobs on pro blogger Help a business owner as a virtual assistant with jobs on Upwork, acquire new skills via online courses for entrepreneurs and monetize, become a Uber driver, help with household tasks on TaskRabbit, pick up the odd occasional job on Craigslist and more. If you don't have a lot of time to devote to earning income, you can focus on increasing your income streams with passive income like starting a dropshipping online store with Shopify. 
start your own custom clothing business on Shopify, sell profitable content that is blog, ebooks, courses, webinars, audiobooks, podcasts, apps, become an affiliate marketer, buy properties and rent them out, then also invest in stocks. Fortunately, your seven streams of income can all come from the same source. For example, if you're an e-commerce expert, your streams of income can come from creating seven different stores. And remember, you don't need to start with seven streams. You can build up it over time. Then the 10 and the last tip for your financial freedom is um, invest in your future. The last financial freedom tip is an important one. Say you follow the advice and recommendations in this, in this video, get out of debt and grow your savings. That might be enough to help you out right now. But what if the unexpected happens? Will you be prepared for it? It's important to set aside money for rainy days, retirement, and sorry to be morbid here, in case you die to help ensure your family doesn't drown paying for your funerals, debts, and taxes. Okay, now let's get back to that happy place. If you have got that 9 to 5 job, talk to your company about adding a retirement plan or check to see if you are already having the deductions made towards it. The deduction gets taken out before it hits your account. so. You never feel like you are losing money and it's pretty cool to check it out periodically and see your savings grow. 